you very much, sir. And I thank each one of the members who uh, participated in this very brief discussion, but pointed to the various aspects of this uh, bill which is coming to replace the ordinance. I express my gratitude for the members who spoke, Sri Jairam Ramesh ji, and all other Mahesh Puddar and all others uh, with the permission of the chair, although I would have really liked to read out the complete list of the names. So broadly, the discussion has centered around three or four main issues. One, as to why we are constantly coming up with amendments. Couldn't we think of these aspects even as the bill was introduced in 16? And even then, why so many ordinances? So that is the very uh, point on which I would like to seek indulgence of this house and present a case of a government which is being very responsive. A case where the government is listening to the industry, small, medium, big, and understanding their requirements with a change in law, with a change in approach, that is, we are not leaving companies like the way in which at one point in time, I'm not faulting it, at one point in time, companies were left at the mercy of BAFR or left to see what the Surface Act would do. And we waited for resolutions and you had certain kind of results coming out of them. Again, not faulting, but that kind of set of results which came were not absolutely acceptable, long drawn, not really fruitful at the end of the day. Companies didn't know where they were, debtors, creditors, all of them were equally worried. So the need for an insolvency bankruptcy code arose and therefore that was brought in in 2016 and both houses had discussed and cleared the act. But of course after that, because of the changing uh, requirements and also the requirement to fine tune the act itself, the need arose every time so that we are also quick in coming up with changes to the act. So it has no other motive even if it is suspected, except for being absolutely responsive and absolutely in tune with the times. And above all, also, because periodically we, re we are reminded that the Supreme Court has come up with this uh, order, are you doing something very different? Whilst I humbly submit, I perfectly understand the verdicts of the Supreme Court and we'll honor them. The right to legislate and come up with such laws for the country, ultimately just with this house. So I would honorably, uh, uh, um, honestly, I would like to uh, appeal to the members to see this code and the various amendments and the various ordinances which are coming through in keeping with the requirement of the time are very much in spirit and letter in spirit of what the Supreme Court says. So not only are we responsive, not only are we trying to keep in, uh, in tune and uh, in uh, sync with the times, but we are also understanding the letter and spirit with which Supreme Court passes its verdict and carry it forward further to legislate and come up with such acts which can be meaningful uh, for resolution processes. And when resolution processes go with the spirit that companies will have to be kept alive rather than liquidate and finish, I think it also has a very strong impact on jobs. And therefore, the first point of concern, whilst we are talking about this IBC, is very clearly, yes, the amendments are coming consciously. Yes, the amendments are coming periodically because we are responding to the requirements of the people outside the industry, leaders, M MSMEs, inclusive, and their needs. So it is being done. And again, amendments, because when uh, the amendments are brought into the parliament, and if in case it doesn't get pa passed because either the parliament session uh, uh, ends sine die or because we're waiting for the next session, there is a need that there is no hiatus left in the uh, outside world. 
there, that hiatus itself can create a lot of uh, disturbance and confusion. Some cases are pending, some cases are awaiting final verdict, some cases are in the process of being heard. But if the continuation in law is not there and the hiatus creates in its own um, realm a kind of a problem, that has got to be avoided. And that is the reason, even as we are coming periodically with several amendments, the need for simultaneously, as though in a tango, we are bringing in audience, uh, ordinances, it's because we don't want to leave that gap at all. Quickly, we move from one to another with the standing committee looking into it and then taking their viewpoint also. So they are not unthinkingly done. I want to assure the House that the amendments are periodic, yes, thoughtfully. Ordinances do come in play because we don't want hiatuses. So that is uh, the first point on which ma many members did express a bit of a concern. So then the performance of the NCLT, and if we analyze that, the concern raised by some of the members would be clearly addressed. So if I just refer to the figures, total cases dealt by NCLT and I'm giving as on 31st January 2020. Um, MNAs are 10,429. IBC related cases are 27,107. Others are 26,987, totaling 64,523. But from among them, cases disposed by NCLT, I just refer to the IBC related ones. Cases totally, Disposed of by NCLT are 43,102. Only IBC related cases from among the 43,102 are 14,977. And again, the number of cases pending with the NCLT, IBC alone, the total number of pending cases are 21,421. And IBC related in that 21,421 are 12,130. So if that gives a picture of how far the NCLT is going, NCLT has disposed of 43,102 cases out of that 64,523. Out of the total 64,523, 43,102 cases have been disposed of. And in the last, that is just in the last three years, which is, I think, a reasonably good performance. Out of the 4, uh, 43,102 cases, which I read earlier, uh, 14,977 relate to IBC. So I think, and, and also we should uh, take on board that the NCLT is encouraging disposal of cases under the IBC before the admission itself. So even before admission, if cases are getting disposed of, that is better off for people. And um, so if this is the way in which cases are moving and IBC is showing its performance, I just want to highlight that many members, as we, as we heard them speak, the other concern that they expressed was about home bias. I want to uh, clearly uh, present before this House as to what are the ways in which we've dealt with, with the home buyers related matters. From the time 2000, uh, 19, this government has come in. I've had several rounds of meetings to address the issue of home buyers. I've even come to this house to answer a few questions related to home buyers, particularly in the case of one of the two big cases which were going on. One of them was in the court, Supreme Court. Uh, I think uh, no harm in naming the case now, Amrapali. The other, which was not in the Supreme Court, but we were uh, trying to talk was the JP. Quite a lot of discussions happened purely to make sure home buyers are not going to suffer. In between, of course, some uh, people approached the court rightly for their rights, and that case is also now resolved that the NBCC would be taking up the construction and completing it. The government is fully seized of the difficulties which home buyers are going through, and we have shown clear proactive initiatives that we have taken to sort out the cases which are lying unfinished. Third, for the home buyers, because there was uh, this kind of a, uh, indication from some members' of speech that you're taking care of the big interests, the promoters of big projects, but you're not bothered about home buyers, that's not true at all, I want to assure the House. We have, in between July, the last time I presented a budget, and this budget which was uh, presented, 
in February, I've had several rounds of discussing what the home buyers would want, what has got to be done in terms of completion of those incomplete languishing uh, projects. And that is the reason why we have come up with a project, a single window uh, mechanism through which, with some kind of a governmental participation, we're giving uh, the last mile connectivity, uh, completion related funding, which is when projects lie languishing, when home buyers have paid or taken their loan, they're paying their monthly um, installments, but the houses have not been given to them, we have made sure that the promoters do not get the money in one go, but get it in tranches as and when they complete the last completion leg will be done through the single window which we have created. And this is also being done, being consistent with the RERA. We are not violative of RERA even there. And therefore, I would just want to talk about the home buyers' cases. Uh, cases filed since inception, this is particularly in the NCLT. Cases filed since inception are 2,454 cases. Completed. All right, sir. So I might have to uh, condense many of my replies. I wouldn't want to give the data. But on the home buyers, I want to assure the House uh, that we are taking care of the interests. And uh, home buyers are comprehensively being uh, ad, uh, issued uh, clear uh, FAQs to see how their interests can be pro protected. Uh, I remember uh, Honorable Member Amar Patnaik raising the question of uh, how, how are you going to deal with the financial uh, creditors matter. This is primarily to avoid frivolous litigation that we've come up with a uh, 100 or 10, whichever is the lowest kind of a thing, because we've had several issues of one home buyer who would probably go rightly asking for justice, but in the process, the resolution itself gets delayed and the time value of money is also so got to be kept in mind. So the other issue is uh, recoveries, haircuts, on which a lot of people had concern. I, will, I would take one minute of your time and expand on that because that's very important. Jairam Rameshji spoke about a particular uh, company and said, you know, in that particular case, so many people have lost their jobs and so on. Sir, 51 companies have been liquidated. Claim amount of 9,870 9, crores was there. Liquidation value was 93 crores. Realization was only 96 crores. 51 included that particular company Gotaringa and um, Orchid, whose claim, sir, was 8,000, on whom the claim was 8,163 crores, and their asset value was absolutely zero. So naturally, in a company where there are just nothing there, for us to value, uh, realize the value of the existing prevailing assets, you're ending up with huge haircuts. So it, this doesn't happen in every one of the cases, but in cases where assets are absolutely zero, you may end up with a huge haircut. So the, finally, MSME is another issue on which most members express concern. I want to assure the House that just as in the case of the home buyers, for MSMEs, we are closely working with the MSME ministry and making sure the suggestion that the MSME Act itself will have to be amended is very well taken and the ministry concerned is working with. But I have particularly made sure that the governmental dues for MSME are clear and nearly 80% of it have all been cleared unless they are in disputes. So government owing money to MSME is no longer right and now there is an institutional mechanism through which that kind of a clearance will go on. It doesn't mean that one time we've done it, it'll be forgotten. And therefore, MSME issue, I wanted to assure in great detail that we are looking at making sure the MSMEs have a provision. The TREADS platform itself gives them a chance so that once they upload their bill, now that is also being made compatible with the GST. Uh, once they upload the bill, the banks will be told and we have given clear instruction that they should honor those bills and give them the money so that delay doesn't affect them, leading them to liquidity uh, crisis. One pertinent question with the, which uh, 
Honorable Member Satish Chandra Mishra raised, what happens if such dues are pending with governments, municipalities and so on? I want to assure him that the RBI has also initiated corporate insolvency resolution process against Divan Housing Society Finance Company, that is, under the rules uh, and the process that work is going on. But we have created within the IBC a section 227 through which financial uh, uh, defaulting companies are also going to be treated akin with the companies and bankers. Similarly, bank defaults will also be handled within the IBC. There is a section which we have created. Eventually, of course, it might be in the interest that we have such a mechanism through a separate act. So with, with a, a sort of condensed uh, reply, I hope it satisfies all the members who have raised. For want of time, I couldn't elaborate on more, but I seek the members' support in passing this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I shall first put the statute to the